Hi, I'm Larry Puckett, the DCC Guy. You know, in the previous video that I did on the anatomy of a turnout, I showed you the names for various parts of turnouts, and I talked about the different kinds and, you know, uh, how they work. So today what I want to do is take a look at examples of these various types of turnout. So I'm going to go ahead and um, zoom in here on the workbench and uh, we'll lay out the turnouts and take a look at them. Okay, so first off, uh, let's take a look at this uh, Shinohara turnout. Uh, these were made in, uh, by uh, Shinohara in Japan for many, many years. Uh, they finally went out of business a couple of years ago when the owner retired and chose not to sell the company. These are power routing turnout. You can see that it has a metal rail joiner here at the throw bar and another metal rail joiner here at the uh, pivot point for the uh, uh, point rails. So they are depend this turnout is dependent on physical contact at the contact between the stock rails and the point rails for electrical pickup. The electricity carried right on through to the closure rails and because, again, because of this metal um, throw bar here, everything is the same polarity um, on the, the point rails and on the closure rails. And you can see here they go ahead and merge and form the um, frog itself. And then coming out of the frog we have the um, frog rails, which also are ele electrically continuous with the frog and with the closure rails. So, you know, they're all the same polarity all the time. And uh, whenever you switch them, whichever way it goes, that's what the polarity will be. So these are not a type of turnout that I recommend. You know, they are not DCC friendly at all. Okay, okay let's go ahead and look at one that is DCC friendly. And this is my favorite turnout. It's made by Microengineering. And you can see here, it has an insulated throw bar, a plastic throw bar so that the point rails are independently uh, powered, okay? They uh, are not dependent on the stock rail contact there for their electrical pickup. And coming down here to the uh, junction with the closure rail, there is a joint here, and uh, they have a rail joiner down in here that connects these two and allows it to swivel from side to side. And then we have our closure rails, which are uh, end here at the frog and you can see right here there is a small gap uh, between the closure rails and the frog itself and there's a, a, a plastic uh, between the uh, between them so that you're not going to have any expansion and get a, uh, a short across that gap and then you have your your uh, frog which is a bronze insert a bronze casting that is set into the plastic here and then coming out of that, you have the two frog rails. Now, interestingly, these two frog rails are not continuous with the frog or the closure rails. So these can be powered independently, primarily by just going ahead and uh, soldering them uh, to the running rails outside of the turnout. And that will provide them power. And that brings up the question then, how does everything else get powered? Well, if you flip it over, you can see right here on the bottom of the frog casting, there's a little uh, semicircle of bronze exposed. That's the solder point where you can uh, connect a feeder. Just solder it right to that and, uh, you know, feed it down through the roadbed. And you've got power to the frog itself that you can uh, control the polarity and power it using a frog juicer or the contacts on your switch machine. Okay, so how do the uh, other parts get power? Well, right in here, there is a, uh, a gap in between the webbing and the rail of the uh, uh, ties. And what they've done here is they've soldered a, a small piece of wire across the connection to, to form a connection between the stock rail and the closure rail here, and the same thing on the opposite side. So this uh, stock rail and uh, closure rail and set of points will always be the same polarity and the same on this side. Okay, so everything is potentially all live all the time. This is a very DCC friendly turnout and I use it for 99.9% .9 probably uh, or about 99% of the time on the Piedmont Southern Railway and I highly recommend it. It's a very nice, uh, nicely designed uh, turnout. Uh, another one, this is the uh, Walther's 
toenail. This particular one was made for Walther's by Shinohara, but now that Shinohara is out of business, Walther's has come up with a, a new uh, manufacturer for them. And uh, if these aren't available again already, they soon will be. And these are similar in many respects to the one I just showed you. They have a plastic throw bar here so that the uh, point rails are independently powered and the polarity is independent. Like, uh, like the microengineering, they use a rail joiner connection in here to go between the point rails and the closure rails. The closure rail is fairly short and ends here uh, where it converges on the frog with a plastic uh, uh, divider here to make sure that there's no um, shorts created by expansion. Then you have the frog and the frog rails. Now in this particular case the frog rails um, are powered, as you can see here, by these metal jumpers that are installed on the underside uh, of the uh, turnout itself. So you have a connection between this stock rail and this uh, frog rail and between this stock rail and this frog rail. So these are live all the time uh, that the uh, stock rails are powered. And if you go down here, uh, further down here, the same uh, type of arrangement. You have a metal strip that goes between the closure rail and the stock rail here, and the same thing on this side. So they're always getting their power directly from the stock rail to the closure rail, stock rail to closure rail, and same thing here with the frog rails. Now what about the frog though? Well, unfortunately, they did not provide a way to connect a feeder to the frog. And that's a fairly long frog, and, and you'll have a stumbling and, and stalling of locomotives, particularly short wheelbase locomotives, potentially going through this frog if it's dead. So what I do is I just solder, and I don't, I think you can see that, I solder the, uh, uh, the feeder uh, to the side of, uh, the, uh, of the frog itself, and then you can just feed the wire right down uh, below the layout and, you know, power it the same way with either a frog juicer or uh, from uh, a switch machine contacts. And you can do that on either side of the frog. And uh, I always put the uh, feeder on the side away from the uh, away from the aisle so it's less visible. Once it's painted and ballasted, you can't even tell it's there if it's done properly. The only problem with this is these are built up with, the frogs themselves are built up with individual pieces of rail. And because of that, they're very sensitive to melting uh, of, the, um, of the plastic that forms the ties and the base for the frog itself. So you have to be very careful soldering to these. Use a heat sink for sure when you are uh, soldering to these. I've done a number of these. Uh, I have a couple of yards that use these uh, turnouts and they work very well. Um, for me. Okay, finally, another very popular one are these Atlas Custom Line turnouts. Now, these have been available for, for years, and they're very, very common uh, in the North American market. Uh, if you look here, we have an insulated throw bar, a plastic throw bar here, so the, the frog rail or the uh, point rails are not dependent on any contact for power and they're independent, they're not the same polarity. Then you have a riveted uh, pivot joint here that you can see quite easily so that the, uh, frog, the uh, point rails uh, move quite readily. And then there's a metal strip underneath of those that goes underneath of the uh, closure rails to provide power to them or to provide the electrical connection. Then they, then they converge here on the frog. This frog here is an aluminum insert. Now the problem with aluminum is you can't solder to it. There used to be a product called Solder It that was available that you could use. Unfortunately, they improved it and it doesn't work anymore. So what they have done uh, here is if you look real close on either side of the frog, there are a couple of, there's a hole. And that hole is for inserting a screw. So you can insert a screw into that hole and attach a, a feeder wire to the frog that way. Uh, typically, what uh, what most people would do is put the uh, screw here in the bottom and then solder to the head of the screw. And, and that works fairly well. It disguises it fairly well. You don't have anything sticking up on the top of the uh, ties here. And um, that's, that's probably the easiest way to go about doing that. 
Um, coming out of the uh, frog, you have the frog rails, and uh, these you can see here that there is a metal strip that goes here to here, providing uh, electrical continuity between this uh, closure rail and this frog rail. There's another one hidden underneath of it that goes from this one to this one. Therefore, the easiest way to power this whole frog, or a whole turnout really, is by attaching, you know, your um, rail joiners to the um, frog rails and to the uh, running rails on the outside. And that will provide, you know, power continuously from here to here and on down to the point rails themselves. And the same thing on this side. And you can independently power your frog rail. So this is another all live turnout. It is DCC friendly and very common and, and they're regularly available now through uh, hobby shops. Okay, uh, let's take a look now at uh, Pico Insel Frogs. Now Pico is a brand that is very popular in the UK and they've been making inroads in the United States uh, uh, quite a bit. And uh, particularly with their flex track and to a large degree also with some of their turnouts. So first I want to take a look at the uh, insel frog turnout. Um, basically it's called an insel frog because this frog is insulated and um, matter of fact it cannot be powered at all uh, because part of it is plastic and it's set in plastic. For that reason I don't consider this 100% DCC friendly. Now most people will tell you it is a DCC friendly turnout and for the most part it is. But uh, short wheelbase steam locomotives and others going across that might stall. And with sound and DCC, that's a no-no. So for that respect, I don't consider it 100% DCC friendly. However, uh, this can be wired up um, as uh, an all-live turnout. Uh, basically, it's got an insulated throw bar, independently powered um, point rails. You can get power directly from the contact with the stock rails. And um, if you look real close in here, you might be able to see it. There's a little metal strip underneath of the um, point rails that engages the stock rail itself from the bottom and gives you a nice tight uh, fit there electronically. But I still don't like that kind of contact. However, the, uh, the rails through the closure rails and on out to the frog rails are continuous. So this route is continuously powered and this route is continuously powered. So if these are connected here, the frog rails are connected to powered um, running rails adjacent to them, they will go ahead and pass power back through the closure rails and the uh, point rails. So it's an electrified circuit. And the same thing on this side. This one, if it's uh, connected to a live rail, it will pass power back. So it's low live from that uh, respect. Um, still, because it can pick up power just from here, um, if you connect this to an unpowered set of rails, then when you throw it this way, it's going to receive power from this uh, contact here, and this will be live. If you throw it that way, it's going to lose power here, and it's going to be dead. So you can use this to control a, a siding or, or a a lead where you might store locomotives and you can uh, power route that. Um, otherwise, it's a nice little turnout. Um, so you might want to uh, give these a look. Now, another um, Pico product are the electrofrogs. And they're called electrofrogs because the frog can be electrified. And you'll see it has a uh, insulated throw bar here. And so the, uh, the point rails can be independently powered. And then you've got your closure rails feeding into this frog. And because of the way it's designed, you can have a potentially very long frog because it's continuous through here. The closure rails form part of the frog, and then they're electrically are connected to these uh, frog rails here. And um, there is there is a complete electrical connection, and both of these are connected. So, when you use this in this configuration, you must put insulated rail joiners at this end or you'll get a dead short because these are both connected and that would create a dead short when it's connected to running rails that are powered. So from that standpoint, it's not DCC friendly, but it's made to be power routing in this configuration. Now, if however you want to make this all live and DCC friendly, you can do it. 
because if you look on the back here, there are a set of jumpers right in here. There's a pair of them. Move that out of the way. And you can cut those two jumpers and immediately that isolates the enclosure rail, the closure rails from the frog itself. So these become independently powered and isolated from the frog. This becomes the whole frog though. And it's still connected here, so you have to watch that and use insulated rail jointers. But at least that way you've got an isolated frog that can be powered using this nice little wire that they have attached for you. You can run this to a frog juicer or to the uh, switch contacts on a uh, tortoise switch machine or some other type of switch machine. Okay, so then how does the rest of, how do the point rails and the closure rails get power if you've cut those jumpers? Well, right here, there is a, uh, a space between the ties where you can put a, where you can solder a piece of wire across between the stock rail and the uh, closure rail on each side. So that means that the stock rail and closure rail would be electrically connected and live all the time, and same over here. So this end becomes independently powered. Um, but that leaves this whole end up here. Now what I prefer to do with this is leave this intact and use a Dremel tool with a cutoff disc and make a cut right here and a cut right here. And that isolates the frog. It also isolates the um, closure rail and the uh, frog rails. And then you can make your little jumper connection there to power those off of the stock rails. And out at this end, since those are now isolated, the frog rails are isolated from the frog and from one another, they can be connected to powered running rails. So that makes it, you know, essentially the same as the Walther's uh, turnout that I showed you earlier from a, an all live standpoint. So these are both nice little options, and this one especially so because, you know, you can make it all live, DCC friendly, in just a few easy steps. So take a look at the uh, website and at the Pico website, and they have uh, a lot more information on there. They also have come out with, I believe, what's called their Unifrog design that kind of combines, you know, the best of both worlds. So I don't know the status of that. Um, uh, design. They were bringing it out first in in scale and we're going to roll it out in other scales. And I, I'm not sure, I haven't checked their website lately to see the status. So you have a lot of choices out there in the marketplace, but again, the ones you know that I prefer are the um, microengineering. I, I recommend you take a look at these uh, when you uh, start your next model railroad. Well, I hope that gives you a better idea of what's available as far as the types of turnouts uh, on the market today, and some like the old Shanahara that, you know, you can probably find them in, in fairly good quantities at train shows and that kind of thing. And maybe in a future video, I'll show you how to convert these to a DCC friendly turnout. Uh, it's not all that difficult, you know, and I showed how to do it in a previous article in Model Railroader, and I'll put a, a a note as to which article or which issue that was. But at any rate, um, I obviously haven't shown you every possible turnout that's uh, available and made everywhere in the world, and I haven't gotten into the turnouts that are available that come with train sets and that kind of thing. With that, um, I hope you're staying safe and uh, catching up on all the videos. You know, there's over 75 videos now here on the DCC Guy channel. So, Take a, take a little uh, few minutes now and then to catch up on videos that you haven't seen and go back and review some. Be safe, and uh, I'll be back next week with another video. Um, I may come up with a video on Monday, another bonus video on something, and uh, I'm not going to tell you what it is. I'll just let it be a surprise, and that way if it doesn't get done by Monday, uh, you won't be disappointed. Okay, so have a good weekend, and take it easy now. Be safe.